Let's begin our Osmos based Egan Matrix programming videos with a simple presentation on comparison on where the Osmos comes from Egan matrix wise the Hawken continuum versus what the Osmos does in relationship to how the continuum processes pitch pressure and aftertouch which on the continuum is Y in relationship to the Osmos, Y on the continuum is front to back motion, whereas on the Osmos, it is the aftertouch motion that you reach halfway down when you press the key. So I haven't programmed anything yet on the Osmos, which is why you don't hear anything. Let's go into our editor which we've loaded up. You can look into the manual in terms of how to do that. Basically, you need to make sure you're on the Osmos 2 port, which the editor uses for communication to the Osmos. And we're just going to discuss basics in this video. So even if you're starting out, you know nothing about Egan Matrix programming, you'll still get something out of this. Now, there are three standard functions that you can provide in the Egan matrix called X, Y, and Z. Programming the matrix, you'll see this matrix portion of your screen, of your editor. You read this basically as sources on the left that go to destinations up top. So I have a master section, which is basically how I process outputs on the Osmos or continuum how I send things to wet and dry, left and right channels, how I might incorporate the recirculator, the reverb, echo delay settings. I can program some of those in and how I can incorporate Egan matrix convolution. I can apply that before it goes to the master section or I can apply it after it goes to the master section. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff today. Pretty much everything in the videos you see online applied to both the Continuum and the Osmos, with the exception of some of the things we're going to talk about today. All we're going to do is look at oscillators today, primarily the first oscillator, which can either be an oscillator, an integrated oscillator, a Jenny oscillator, a phase generator. It can be noise from seed. It can also be set to one of the filter options. We're going to keep it at its default DSF oscillator setting. We're not going to worry about all the other many things you can do in the Egan matrix with biquad banks or delays or shape generators. All that stuff, again, is covered in videos. We're going to talk about specifics of how you program the Osmos at the topmost level differently than you program the continuum. So let's go through and put in the most basic preset you can have, which is a sine wave. I'll take an oscillator and I'll use the standard X function. If I want to, I can program a formula instead, but we're going to start out with the standard X, Y, and Z functions. So I'll set X, which is going to track pitch across the keyboard according to where middle C is. Don't worry about that right now. For now, X is just going to track pitch as you would normally expect it on a keyboard. Z, which is your pressure function. I'm going to put on the outputs of oscillator one that go to the stereo left and right master section channels, and that will give me sound. I haven't programmed any Y yet, so this is going to output a sine tone. And if I press lightly and then press to the aftertouch area, you can hear I'm getting my crescendo in the aftertouch area. Nothing because I haven't programmed any Y. Right? So that's the important thing to understand. Z or anything you program as Z will reach its maximum at the aftertouch area. And from there, if you want to continue a crescendo, you have to do something with Y. 
Hitch is still active. And you can do your vibrato on a sine tone in this case. On the continuum, you can do the same thing. Of course, you have continuous pitch on the continuum. I can only simulate that on the Osmos with my pressure-weighted portamento, but we're not going to really worry about that today. So I program the most basic thing I can on an Osmos, a sine tone. Now you might notice, depending upon what your gain settings are, here I have pre-gain level set to 52. If I bring that up to its kind of midpoint, 64, you can hear I can overmodulate a sound because there's saturation effects that will take over on the continuum if your gain is too much. So you can counter that in a number of ways. You can reduce the gain, either pre-level or post-level. Or if you want, you can put a scale factor on your outputs. Let's say I put 0.5 as a scale factor. This bottom set of four rows, you'll notice as direct, there are two plus rows, which are used to add offsets or direct inputs to things numerically or through one of these x, y, or z functions, which I've done here, or through a formula. There's a minus row that will give you a negative offset. And then there's a multiplication row, which lets you multiply anything you put in that row by all the values in rows that are above it. So if I want to reduce the volume of whatever z is doing here, I can multiply it by 0.5. Still getting a little bit of modulation, so let me multiply that by 0.25. And now that overmodulation is gone. Well, you can see it's a lot easier to just adjust the gain to get rid of that initially. But you'll see a lot of Osmos presets play around with this multiplication scaling row to try and even out a sound for one of various reasons, often because convolution tends to increase gain. So a lot of presets use an offset on convolution to reduce the overall output when the convolution increases. Well, let's not worry about that. For the purposes of this discussion, we want to now add Y as control to the spectral balance, basically the waveform change that affects the timbre of my oscillator. So now when I press pressure, I'm still just going to get a sine tone because the only thing that will change the timbre of this preset will be when I go into the aftertouch area, the Y area. Let's go into the aftertouch. Ah, uh, you can hear that the timbre adjustment's taking effect as I go into Y. And you can also hear that some of the lower tones get reduced as this waveform changes. So not only does the timbre change, but the volume of the output gets less. These are things you just have to deal with when you create presets and adjust for them if you want a constant volume output. Now, I have the same preset programmed in the continuum, but on the continuum, I need to move bottom to top to do what I do on the Osmos in the aftertouch area. Well, what's the big difference there? I have a lot more control on Y on the continuum because it's wherever I place my finger. And on a continuum, you're never going to place your fingers exactly in the same horizontal position. So I'll get a little bit of timbre variation on a chord just by the nature of where my fingers are. On Osmos, you can do that too, but you have to vary where your fingers are in that aftertouch area. All very well and good, but I need to think about how I can effectively use both the pressure area and the aftertouch on the Osmos together to get various effects that I need to write effective presets. 
So the first thing I'm going to want to do is that sound is not particularly effective to me. Let me vary the amount of Y. I don't want so much motion in that Y from 0 to 1. Maybe I want after touch to only move the timbre a little bit. How can I do that? We'll use a formula now. At the right, I have my formulas, formula A. You can see I can change W, which is basically master control over my formula. X, Y, and Z. I want to program just a Y function right now. So what I'll do is I'll set Y to go from zero, but only go to say 0.61. That's going to be a little sawtoothy like at the max setting. And now instead of Y, I'll put this formula on that spectral balance on the timbre column of the oscillator. You can see Y here is shelved a little bit at the beginning. It's going to be zero. And then at the top, it's going to be shelved at that max value. Well, remember, Y is always zero until you hit the aftertouch area. So most presets don't shelve too much. You can hit the shift and then move your sliders to change the shape of your Y. I'll do that so that it's just a linear function. You have a lot of different choices for the shape here. I can have an S function. I can have a squared function. I can have a square root. I can actually even have Y stepping various ways. A few presets actually use the stepping function, not many of them. But I'm just going to go back to the linear Y, which is by far the most used Y shape. And now when I play, I don't go to that kind of way over the top, totally attenuated, buzzy waveform sound. I'll go to the timbre that makes sense as a max. So that's very nice. I'm still going to be sign until I get to my aftertouch. But if I play quickly enough through the pressure area, you don't really notice the sign kicking in. But what if we want the timbre to start increasing right when I start pressing? and move from 0 to that 0 0.61 value all the way through. In fact, let's do it this way. Let's set it to 0 0.75 is the max. There, I'm getting a little more sawtoothy. But I want to do this through the whole pressure, not just on Y. And this is where I start having combination formulas of Y and Z, which you'll see everywhere in Osmos programming. So instead of just going 0 to 0.75 on Y, I'm going to go 0 to 0.35 on Z. And from there, I'm going to go 0 to 0.35 on Y. Remember, Z will max out at its maximum position and stay at that max value. And then Y will take over. Here, I'm using an addition to create a spectral balance, a timbre change that will start on pressure and then Y will take over at the max point. There you can hear I'm just on Z. Ranging through that timbre change is not just a sine tone. And it continues as I go through Y. That is a formula that's used all over the place because many, many presets don't do anything special on Y. They actually use Y, as you'd expect, to continue doing whatever Z was doing. And a lot of presets do that in addition to adding special effects on Y as well. And now let's talk about output. I'm still at a point where my output volume is all Z dependent. And I can hear as my timbre changes, my volume gets less. I need to do something to both increase 
volume on Z and also increase volume on aftertouch. Well, we're going to use a very similar formula for that. We'll create another formula on B, and this time I'm going to use W set to 1, and I'm going to multiply that times whatever X plus Y plus Z is. This is one of my formula options. If you click the little equal sign here, you have your five precedence options for creating formulas. This is what I call the one formula that rules them all in the osmos because you'll see it all over the place, a scaling formula, where I'll either have a constant of 1 or I'll gate 1, and then I'll scale that by whatever x plus y plus z is, most commonly y plus z. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have z go to say 0.5 and I'll have y do something similar going from 0 to 0.5. I will remove the shelving and most all presets use a nonlinear z to give you a better pressure response and a linear y because once I get to the aftertouch I don't need to impose another nonlinear effect. So this is a formula that you're going to see all over the place in presets. Either gated, which means this formula will not take effect until a key is pressed, or you could have it use a constant, and that could be used many, many other places in your formula schemes. Let's use the gate option here. And I'll replace Z with my formula, click the formula to display it. And now, when I press, I get a much better volume response all the way through the key. You'll notice that I'm still reducing in volume a little bit at the max spectral balance, the max timbre range. That's just an effect of the harmonics of the preset. Well, that's easy to adjust for. I can simply increase the Y value to go higher, maybe to 1. And now I have a much more consistent volume all the way through the key press. And if you want, of course, you can go in and increase the gain a little if that volume is a little too low for you. So now let's do one more thing, and that's what if I want to have not only the effect that I've created, but I want something different to happen in the aftertouch as well, some other kind of effect. Let's add vibrato to our preset that is totally Y controlled. I said we wouldn't use a shape generator. Well, let's use one anyway. So we'll define another formula, formula C, by the way, I can just type C in my matrix and it will allocate a formula or go to one that's already there. And what I want to do is create a shape generator. I'll set the shape generator to a default value, 4 cycles a second, 4 hertz. And now I'm going to use the remaining standard formula, W, which simply means gate to 1. So when I press the key, W will instantly set a value of 1. And now I'm going to add a little bit of frequency offset using that shape generator as a multiplier on X, my frequency, in the W portion of my formula, which is where I set shape generators. I'll select shape generator 1 that I've set to a sine wave here. The default's a ramp, but I want a sine wave in this case. And I'll set that to a small frequency multiplier. Go in and you can see I can scale my formulas here. I'll scale this one to a hundredth and I'll set this to 0.005 that I'm using as a multiplier. And it's such a small offset that 
when I multiply this frequency by such a small number, I get no sound. Now, if I've used that as an offset to X and not a multiplier, now you'll hear I'll get my vibrato, but that won't be scaled correctly across my full range because it's an offset. Obviously, frequencies are lower at the bottom end of the keyboard, so you'll notice the proportion of that offset to that low frequency it's going to be a lot more noticeable than high up I want my vibrato to be even across the full range of X so I'll use a multiplier instead of an offset in this case that can be useful in terms of a effect but not so much as an across the board vibrato so I'll put it back where it was and what I'm going to do is using this ancillary function I'm going to add one use add and then the default is one I'll add one to this in effect what this means is W is going to be one plus whatever the shape generator is X will remain X and then the vibrato effect will be added on top of it you can hear it's kind of scaled correctly now but I want it to only happen on Y I don't want it to happen all the time how will I do that I'll use my scaling formula once again multiply whatever my shape generator frequency vibrato is times Y Y is going to be zero until I reach the after touch area. So now, I don't get my vibrato just on pressure. But when I go into the after touch area, then vibrato will kick in. You'll see this all the time in Osmos presets. So I have one formula that gives me consistent volume through the key press, another formula that does something specific on after touch. Now I could add to this. This is coming in on a fixed 4 hertz frequency. Let me make that frequency dependent on Y as well. Let's create another formula. D will make that the frequency. We'll go into D. I'll set my scaling to 10 I will want a max of say 8 Hertz at the bottom of after touch but at the top of after touch could have started Y at some positive value and now at the beginning of after touch the vibrato will start at 1 Hertz and go to 8 Hertz at the end of the after touch area let's keep it there when Y starts on after touch at 0 that doesn't mean Y has to actually be zero in a formula. If I start a formula on a positive value, Y will start there formulaic wise when Y equals zero internally at the aftertouch area. Also be aware that you can set X, Y, and Z to a constant. In this case, 10. Now it doesn't matter where I press or how I press. We can turn our display on click formula D and you'll see if you look at the formula display Y is 10 no matter where I press well let's go back to what we had before we we'll want a minimum of Y being a 1 Hertz vibrato and a maximum Y of being 8 Hertz vibrato this is only taking effect on Y and our vibrato only takes effect you can see on Y as well. Now the frequency of the vibrato should increase as I move through the aftertouch area. There you go. So now I have two effects on Y bringing in the vibrato and changing speed of vibrato. Let's end this presentation by adding one more thing, a macro controller. And what we'll do is, on my output, I'm going to add a blend. 
If I go to the right side here, you'll see I can set a primary and a secondary option. If I set a blend, I can blend on a formula. I can blend on a macro controller. We'll do that. We'll blend on the first macro controller. What I'll do is on the primary, persistence will be its minimum off. But on the secondary, I will set persistence to a high value. Also on the secondary, I want to make sure I set my other values the same since I only want persistence to change on this blend. If, well, I want to set my gate to 1. Y, you know what? Let's set Y to 0.5 and Z will set to its 0.5 value as well. And now you'll see, now I'll define macro controller 1. Down here in the edit area, I just say I 1 equals, I'll give it a name, release is normally the name that's applied to this function, done, and now when I go, I'll see I've created a macro controller, I've tied that macro controller to this blend, when the macro controller is at its minimum, the values that you see on the screen will take effect, Y will go to 1, Z will go to 0.5. When I go to my secondary, I'll add persistence, but Y will decrease. So as I bring up the macro controller, Y will decrease to a max of 0.5. And since persistence sustain is going to be added at that point, maybe it makes sense not to have Y go to a higher value there. What's the ultimate result of this? When the macro controller is at its minimum, it will be exactly what we did before. But as I bring up that macro controller, I'm adding persistence on the outputs. Sustain. You can hear, if I take it to its max, that sustain is applied. There you have it, pretty much the basics of what you need to know to program the Osmos effectively on pressure and on aftertouch. X we haven't talked too much about, but X is going to be very similar in programming to everything we said in videos relating to the continuum. That should do it for this first video.